In the name of Jesus. Say my father. My father. Say my maker. My maker. Say my father. My father. Say my maker. My maker. Say tonight. Tonight. Under the covering. Under the covering. Of the superior blood. Of the superior blood. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. I declare. I declare. My life. My life. Is blessed. Is blessed. My marriage. My marriage. Is blessed. Is blessed. Even if you are not married, say it. Say my marriage. My marriage. Is blessed. Is blessed. Say my life. My life is blessed. Is blessed in the name. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Say my father. My father. Say my maker. My maker. Under the covering. Under the covering of the superior blood. Of the superior blood. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. I overrule. I overrule. I overthrow. I overthrow. I overpower. I overpower every spirit. Every spirit. Every attack. Every attack of the enemy. Of the enemy against my life. Against my life. Against my family. Against my family. Against my marriage against my marriage in the name, in the name of Jesus of Jesus say, I overrule I overrule every attack every attack every attack every attack every prediction every prediction of the enemy of the enemy against my life against my life against my family against my family against my marriage against my in marriage the name, in the name of Jesus of Jesus your voice and pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Rapa Pahataya, Sika Rabanados, Lepa Baba Pahataya Labra, Eva Baba Baba, the only animals, the only animals, the only animals, the Baba Baba. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, somebody lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Pray for your family, pray for your family. Pray for your marriage life, pray for your marriage life. Pray for your marriage life, pray for your marriage life. Left a prayer, left a prayer. Plead the blood, plead the blood, plead the blood. Let the covering of the blood be upon your life, upon your family, upon your marriage. In the name of Jesus. Rapa baba baba hataya siya. Rapa baba baba hataya sika takaya raba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are praying. Then after that we will sit for a little bit. Just one more prayer. We are praying tonight for the covering of God over every marriage. If you want to get married, if you are married, if you have divorced, we are praying for divine covering. We are praying against the hand of the instigator, the hand of the provocator. Against the power of the enemy to frustrate homes, to destroy families, to destroy marriages and relationships. We are praying that let the ordinance of God, let the mandate of God prevail over our life. That whoever God has intended that you shall marry, let the spirit of God release that into manifestation. Let every marriage be preserved. Let every marriage be kept. Let every home be kept. Let every home be preserved. Lift up your voice and pray right now. Papa, 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 Papa,
Tayana bara 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 bas, Tayana bara bara bas, Sikayana bara bara bas, Tayana bara 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 bas, Papa 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 bara bara, Tayana bara 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 bas, Ziandi bara bara bas, Tayana bara 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 bas, Ziandi bara bara bas, Papa yana bara bara bas, Ziandi bara bara bas, Papa 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 yana bara bara bas, Tayana bara bara bas, Sikayana bara bara, Tayana bara bara bas, Sikayana bara, Tayana bara bara bas, Sikayana bara bara, Papa 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 yana bara. The Papa Payana Banabas, the Papa Payana Banabas, Tayana 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 Papa Yanabana Bassica 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 Yanabana Le masukara bagata, le makata ya la brasi kote ya, sukara bagata ya, sikara bagata ya saya. Ere ma 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 la brasi ande ya, sukara bara bara dos. Ere ne imo Jesus, ere ne imo Jesus. Rabata ta ya sikara bas, le masikara bara bara, le ba 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 ba, le ba 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 
If you are the one who is hoping that let it snow and there should be no church. But it is going to snow though. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. For the next couple of days in January or January, we will be dealing with marriage and the family. Specifically, the devil's attack on marriages and the family. And what we will be diving into is very imperative for those who are married, those who are not married, those who don't want to get married, and those who wants to get married, and those who are divorced, those who are coming from dysfunctional homes. And marriages are the verge of collapse. This topic and why we are doing this for the first month of 2024 is especially at the root of my spirit. So I am not, um, I'm going to take my time to lay some foundations. Today being Friday, I'll go very quick. Amen. I'll go very quick. Um, Kedis, let me have a key. Amen. I'm going to go very, very quick. I'll give you a lot of scriptures today. It is simply just a foundation. My focus today is that we shall rise again and we shall pray before the service ends. And we shall, you know, I mean, enter into some prophetic uh, signs and tokens if the time allow us to do that. I plan to keep the time with you and not to extend the time. But we'll keep the time as planned until we can find out what works in this place. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. Marriage is known to be the oldest institution. Marriage is known to be the oldest institution. An institution is a permanent social structure that is devoted to a cause. Every institution has a purpose or it has a cause. Institutions are not established to be temporary, but they are established to be permanent. Institutions have rules. Institutions have constitutions that control social or human habits. And marriage happens to be the oldest of these institutions. But in specific terms, it is the very first institution that God Almighty, the creator of the earth, established. The question that I have been searching for in scriptures is because marriage is difficult. Marriage is hard work. Are you understanding this? And this also goes for those of you who are yet to get married. Today I want you to understand the very foundation, the purpose for which marriage was established. So that when you understand that, you, 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 you do not go into marriage with the wrong motive. And those who are in marriage must also understand that you have to fight for it. Tell someone you have to fight for it. Those of you who are in marriage must understand that you have to fight for it. And when I say the word fight... I am not only saying that you have to pray and you have to fast. Sometimes taking a walk with your spouse is a fight for your marriage. Sometimes spending time together and talking is a fight for the marriage. Sometimes taking a trip together is a fight for the marriage. But that is the fight on the social aspect. What I want to deal with is the fight on the spiritual aspect. 
I want to give you five things that makes marriage very imperative to God. Five things that defines the foundation of marriage. Five things that will make you understand why marriage by itself is a battleground. Why the home must be protected. Why the home must be fought for. Why the family must be fought for. Why the husband must pray. The wife must pray. He that desires a wife must pray to find one. And he and she that desires a husband must pray to be located. Number one. Marriage was ordained by God. When I say ordained, I am simply using the common word. It was ordered by God. It was ordered by God. Marriage was mandated by God. Marriage is not a human institution. That is why, and I say this, even though God gives us wisdom and God gives us knowledge, I say this to say that if a marriage must function, it must function in the content of God. Somebody turn to um, Genesis chapter 2. And I want you to read a scripture for me over there. Genesis chapter number 2. The verse number 18. Marriage was ordered by God. And if marriage is ordered by God, you don't seek counsel for marriage from anyone outside the wisdom of God. Are you understanding this? Are you understanding this? You don't buy an Apple phone and read a Samsung manual as to how to operate it. In order to understand how to operate it, you must go directly to the manufacturer. And God is the one that instituted and created marriage. He ordered marriage. Genesis chapter number 2 verse 18, please read. And the Lord God said. And the Lord God said. It is not good that, it is not good that man should be alone. That the man should be alone. I will make him a helper. I will make him a helper. Comparable to him. What translation is that? New King James. Read the old King James and I will translate that one. Amen. God and said it is not good. You see when God created everything he said it is good. Everything that God created is good. Everything. The animals, every living thing, every created thing, when God created it, God said it is good. God said it is good. Then God created man. And when God created man, man was functioning properly. But then the Bible said, God observed man and God said it is not good. Are you understanding this? Are you understanding this? And God said it is not what? God. For the man to be what? Alone. Alone. Which means, which means, which means that once again, if Apple creates their phone, they expect you to use an Apple charger for it. Because if you call them and you tell them, that your, your phone is malfunctioning, they will ask you, I mean, when, when you say the power is malfunctioning, they will ask you what charger are you using. They want to make sure if you are using the original charger. If the, the, 
if the power cable you are using is not the original one, that is where they want to diagnose the source from. Even though you may know that that is not even the problem. So why am I telling you this? Is because the original creator God in his manifold wisdom in the creation of man said it is not good for the man to be alone, period. Tell someone it is not good. Tell someone it is not good. No one is meant to be alone. The tragedy of it all is that not everyone will get married. But the journey of singlehood is not going to be a good one. Why? Because it is not good. Now you say Jesus was not married. Now you say, Paul was not married. Jesus did not live to be old. Amen. If you are going to live to a certain age and be in your 60s and 70s, you can agree with God. It is not good. Are you understanding me? It is not good. Because you're going to need someone to help you. But we'll come into that. Go, go on, please. I think they are producing too much heat for you in this place. Go on. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Uh -huh. I will make him a help me. For him. I will make him a help what? Me. A help what? Me. Meat. Not beef. Not, not, he said, a help meat. In other words, the, the, the person I will meet. I mean, the person I will create will meet his standard. So that's what the new King James said, a helper comparable. They will be at the same standard. A help meet. They will meet at the same place. A help meet. Comparable. The same. One is not better the, than the other. A help that is meet for him. A help that meets his standard. A help that is comparable to him. A help that is his equal. The challenge is in marriage. And, 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 and I will come to a point because I don't want to give too much away because today I just want to say a few things and we pray. But the, 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 the challenge is in marriage is to marry someone who is not comparable to you. The challenges in marriage is to marry someone who don't feel that they are good enough for you or you are good enough for them. Adam was not supposed to be good enough or more than for Eve. Adam was supposed to be a help comparable. Eve was supposed to be a helper comparable. They were supposed to help each other but they were to be comparable. They were to meet a standard for each other. One was not to be better than the other. One was not to think that I marry someone less than me. One was not to think that the person I married is worried that we don't meet the same standard. Help me. Why this is important is because in the structure of marriage, the enemy is going to attack a lot of things. That is why when you are starting the foundation of marriage, you must make sure that the standard is met. A helper that is meet. You are not marrying a man that you are heavier than. You are not marrying a man that you have to drag. You will not have to marry a man that will make you the head. A helper that is meet. That meets the standard. Because when the attacks come. And, and the reason for this lesson is the attacks. When the attacks come. The enemy is going to pick the marriage apart. By the things that don't meet the standard. The enemy is going to instigate you. He is going to inculcate your mind with thoughts and things. And you're going to rewind the tape back.
back and say that I know. I shouldn't have married this person or that person. The enemy is going to play some things in your mind if you are not careful and you did not calculate well from the beginning because either you were in a rush, either your friends were married and you also want to marry, either your mother or your father wanted you to marry or whatever the reason you got into the marriage, it will be determined at the attack stage. Number two, marriage is blessed by God. Not only did God ordain marriage, but God blessed marriage. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, please read it. Not only did God order marriage, God ordered that a man should get married. God ordered that it is necessary to be married. It was an order from God. And not only that, he blessed. Genesis 1, 26, read on please. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, uh -huh. and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the So he said, let them have dominion, go on. Over the fish of the sea, uh -huh. and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the Im Go on, yes. Go on. Excuse me. So God created man in his mm -hmm. own image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. And God blessed them. And God what? Bless them. Bless them. The word bless means to enable to succeed. The word bless means to empower something to prosper. To empower something to succeed. So not only did he ordain the marriage, not only did he order or instituted the marriage, not only did God put together the first marriage, the Bible said he blessed. He blessed. He blessed. You can only bless something when you understand that the thing is under attack. Because a blessing is the opposite of a curse. God could have just left the marriage the way it is. After he had instituted it, he's God. He's God. He's God. He instituted it. He made it. He ordered it. He established it. He could have just left it. But he did not just leave it. The Bible said he did what? He blessed. He blessed. For any marriage to succeed, it must be blessed. Why must it be blessed? Because there is an attacker against marriages. And we'll get there soon. There is something that does not want marriages to work. God instituted marriage. He blessed the marriage. Number three, he made it a permanent ordinance. In order for the marriage to fulfill its purpose, it must be what? Permanent. He blessed the marriage for the purpose. He ordained the marriage for a purpose. He says that the woman will be a help meet comparable to the man. Why? Because in the verse number 8, he had given the man an assignment, Genesis 2. He had given the man an assignment over the creation. Genesis 1, 26 as well, we learn that God said, let us make man in our own image, function in our own likeness. Let him have dominion. Let them have dominion over everything that we have created. So, there was a purpose for the marriage. There was a reason for the marriage. The marriage had a purpose. The union had a purpose. You cannot just marry for the sake of anything. 
there was a purpose that was assigned to the marriage. And I'm saying this to say this again. Because when the attacker comes, these things are going to be located. You are going to find out that your marriage don't have a purpose. That is when you start asking yourself, why did I marry this person? Why are we together? Because the marriage does not have a purpose. When God ordained the marriage and he blessed it, he did it for the purpose. An institution must have a cause. And the cause of the marriage is God's mandate upon the earth. That they may rule over the earth. That they may sustain the earth that God has created. That they may be fruitful and that they may multiply. So God has made an ordinance for which the marriage was to happen. But number three, the marriage in order to fulfill the purpose must be what? Permanent. Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. The marriage in order to fulfill the purpose. Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. I'm going too fast than I intend. But don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll stop somewhere soon and revise this. Marriage chapter 2. I mean, sorry. Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said, said that he hated putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment. What translation are you reading? King James? Yeah, just... Is that verse number 16? Yeah, read it. And read, um, read the New King James. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce. For the Lord God of Israel says he hates what? Divorce. divorce. Now God could have used any other word or the prophet could have used any other word to express God's rejection for, for divorce. But he said, God says, I hate divorce. That is a strong word. That is a very heavy word. That is a word that is pregnant with something. If you hate something, you don't want to see it. If you hate something, anyone that participates in that thing is alienated from you. So if God says, I hate divorce thing can stay here anymore because I'm even acting like a gentleman today. Amen. L -l Leave it for now so I don't get distracted. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So, when God says I hate divorce, he means anyone that participates in it. Now is alienated from it. He hates anyone that does it. He is not a partaker of anyone. Why? Because the institution of marriage is meant to be permanent because the only way that God's purpose for humanity can be fulfilled is for the institution to stay intact. When you check the word institution in a dictionary, it is a structure that is meant to be permanent, not temporary. It is meant to be permanent. So God's ordinance for marriage is that it must be permanent. A couple of things, those of you who are not yet married, is that you have an advantage. You have an advantage to process. Not to marry for the sake of marrying. You have an advantage to plan before you marry with purpose. To understand that whatever you are about to enter into is permanent. That divorce is never an option in marriage. You cannot buy and retain. It's not possible with God. Number four. Number one, it must be ordained. It is ordained by God. Number two, it is blessed by God. Number three, it is permanent. Number four. It is bonded by God. Marriage is a bond. 
Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father. Therefore a man shall leave his father. And mother. And his mother. And be joined to his wife. And be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. And they shall become one flesh. A man shall leave his father. A man shall leave his mother. Same way the woman must part from her family. And the two of them shall become one flesh. Now there is, you see, when the attacker comes, a lot of things are going to happen in the middle of the marriage. In the middle of the marriage, you are going to determine who is your family. Are you understanding this? Your biological parents or the stranger that you just married to. But God is saying that the stranger you just married to is more important than the family you came from. So he says, you must leave your family. You must leave your family. And you must cleave to your spouse. This person or this individual now becomes the most important person in your life. And trust me, the attacker will test this. The devil is going to test this. The, the entire foundation of marriage is being tested in the church. And I, that is why I'm ministering about this thing for a while. And we're going to pray. The entire foundation of marriage is being tested. And the church is failing. The reason is because we don't understand why we are even married. We don't understand why God instituted marriage. So the attacker is going to come. And at a certain point. You will have to make a choice. You will have to make a choice between your wife and your mother, your husband and your father or your mother. You are going to have to make a choice. At a certain point, the scripture must be fulfilled. At a certain point, the scripture must determine whether you have left your husband, I mean whether you have left your mother and your father. At a certain point, the scriptures must be tested. At a certain point, it must be determined if you can cleave. At a certain point, it will be determined if you are married. The attacker is going to shake all the stands. I am saying this to you because marriage counseling in church is a social construct. It is not a biblical understanding. Let me give you a scripture for free before I move on to my phone. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Matthew chapter 19. Go to verse 3 and then the verse 4. Matthew chapter 19 verse 3 and 4. The Pharisees also came to him. The Pharisees came to Jesus. Testing him. And they tested Jesus. And saying to him. And they said unto Jesus. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Is it right for a man to divorce his wife? Remember, the Bible said God hates divorce. So the Pharisees, the Bible says, they came to test him. Why? Because they know by the law that Moses had granted divorce. So now they come to Jesus who portrays himself as a holy man. One that seems or claims to know better. So the Bible said, they tested him and they said, is it right for a man to leave his wife by the law? Go on. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? For just any reason? Go on. And he answered and said to them. And he answered and said to them, listen carefully. Have you not read? Have you not what? Read. Have you not what? Red. Church, have you not what? Red. Have you not what? Red. Have you not what? Red. Red. The problem with marriage in the church is knowledge of the scriptures. The problem. 
That's the whole problem we're having. We are married, but we don't know what the scripture says about our marriage. He says, have you not read? Don't you know this by if, if you had read the scriptures, if you had knowledge of the scriptures, you will not even ask this question. Have you not read? Marriage counseling must be rooted in the word of God. Not someone who has gone to some schools and some, and in fact has obtained some degrees. Marriage is instituted by God. It is ordered by God. It must be sheltered by God. Its rules and its wisdom and constitution must come from God. He says to the Pharisees, have you not read? The problem, the problem, why people keep on asking so many questions. Is it wrong? For me to do this with my husband or my wife when we are sleeping. Can we do this stuff? Can we do this stuff? The problem is that they have not read their Bible. Have you not read? So pastor, is it wrong for us to divorce? Jesus said, have you not read? The problem you have is that you have not studied the scriptures. The problem you have is that you don't know what the scripture says. I want a separation. I can't do this anymore. I, I, I want a divorce. I don't love him anymore. I don't love her anymore. Have you not read? So now you, 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 you have these singles meetings. You have this couples meeting. And people are asking questions, 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 questions. Which are good questions. But the problem is that have you not read your pipe? These things are in there. What number were we on now? Number five. <laughs> number five. Marriage is not, and I'm going to use some words, it's not a partnership. It is not an alliance. Now, we have often, in our social construct, Define marriage as a partnership. It is to some degree a partnership. But it is not by its definition a partnership. It entails some form of partnership. But that is not what marriage is. Marriage is not an alliance. An alliance is an agreement between us. That we are agreeing on something. You love me, I love you. Let's agree to get married. It's an agreement for a cause. Marriage is not an alliance. When you begin to see marriage as an alliance and your wife turns against you, you will think your wife has betrayed you. When you begin to see marriage as an alliance and your husband turns against you, you would think your husband has betrayed you. I will explain this by scripture soon. Marriage is a union that is bonded by covenant. It is heavier than partnership. A partnership is of equal parties. An alliance is an agreement. A union is a jointed. It means a united. But you are not just only united, but you are united by covenant. What makes this union special is why the church calls it holy matrimony. Why does the church call it a holy matrimony? Now, in the law of the land, there are ways by which you can be in a relationship. There is what we call domestic partnership. Domestic partnership means you, 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 can, you, can, be, you can be living together as couples, but not registered by the state. However, the state will recognize the union. But it does not call it a union. It calls it a domestic partnership.
partnership, which is why marriage is not a partnership. The state calls it a partnership. Even though the state recognizes a domestic partnership, the federal government does not recognize it. And those of you who don't know the difference between the state and the federal government, the federal government is the nation. The state is the state you are in. So New York State may allow you rights as couples in a domestic partnership. The two of you have agreed by the laws of New York to live together. It's a domestic partnership. But the federal government will not give you the benefit of a union. You will have the benefit of the state as a partnership, but you will not have the benefit of the federal government as a union. Because the federal government has a different definition for a union and a different definition for a partnership. Then there is what the federal government called a civil union. A civil union is recognized in the state and it is recognized in the federal government. Then there is what both the state and the federal government calls marriage. Amazing, isn't it? A civil union is marriage. But it is marriage for special people. Why do I say that? It was created when gays wanted to get married. The federal government wanted to recognize their marriage as equal to a marriage but not a marriage. Because the federal government was still abiding by the rules of the definition of what a marriage is. That it is a union, not a partnership. A union between a man and a woman. So the federal government did not want to give the same title as marriage to same-sex couples. However, it wanted to give them the benefits under the law that marriages will have. So instead of calling it marriage, they call it a civil union. Are you understanding this? I want you to understand this very carefully because in the spiritual content, how you feel your marriage is very critical. So I say to you, your marriage is not a partnership. Yes, it may include something of the sort. But that is not what it is made of, first of all. It is not an alliance. It may include something of a sort. But that is not what it is made of. It is a union. And it is a union bounded by covenant. So the church calls it holy matrimony. Why? The word matrimony does not simply mean a man and a woman are married, but it means a man and a woman are married by God. That is why the church calls it a holy matrimony. So it is not all marriages that are equal. And you must understand what you are entering into. We are not here now going to enter into the technicalities of what the man and the woman does. We will get to that point. But let me stop here in these conditions. The devil knew how important marriage was to God. The devil knew that for God's purpose on earth to be fulfilled, it must happen through marriage. God ordained marriage to fulfill his purpose. And I want to rewind the tape and say, God's purpose on earth, by God's own determination, cannot be fulfilled without marriage. Are you understanding this? Are you understanding this? Run through our churches and you will find out that the large populations of us are from broken families. Run through our churches and you will find out that majority of the church members are from dysfunctional family. You will find out that many are from single parents. You will find out that women enter the church without their husbands. 
Now, remember that God's reason for the marriage was to fulfill his purpose on the earth. So if the devil can make sure that the marriage is not fulfilled, then God's purpose is not being fulfilled. So if you were the devil and you want to attack the church, which you are not the devil, but if the devil wants to attack the church, he will not attack the church. He has to attack the home. He has to attack marriages. If the devil wants to cause God's purpose to fail, what must the devil do? He must attack the vehicle by which God's purpose will be fulfilled, which is marriage. So I'm going to give you a few things and we're going to pray. The first one is Genesis chapter 3. The devil's attack on marriages. Genesis 3 verse 4. Let's read. Then the serpent said to the woman, Then the serpent, who is in the manifestation of the devil, said to the woman, This is the first attack against all of God's creation. This is the devil's first attack, assault against humanity. And what did he choose? He chose the marriage. Watch this. You will surely not die. The devil said to the woman, you will not die. Whatever God said to you. Go on. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Mm -hmm. And you will be like God, mm -hmm. knowing good and evil. My time is up, so let's read faster, please. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. When the woman saw the tree was good. Go on. That it was pleasant to the eyes. It was pleasant to the eye. Go and, on. And the tree and a tree desirable to make one wise. And the tree desirable to make one wise. Read on. She took of its fruit and ate. Uh huh. Go she on. Also gave to her husband. She her also husband. did what? Gave to her husband. She also did what? Gave to her she husband. She gave to the husband. And he ate. And he ate. When the devil was attacking Eve, the devil was attacking Eve with the intent. That if will cause Adam to do likewise. And it turns out Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Listen to me very carefully. The devil understands certain things. He is not ignorant. He is an ancient demon. And he understands certain things that we fail to understand for the simple reason that Jesus said, did you not know or did you not read? The Bible says the devil attacked Adam and Eve. Eve ate and Adam knew he was not to eat that fruit. So why did Adam eat the fruit? Why did Adam boldly disobey God? Be careful who you married. Be careful when you are making a decision to marriage because love will cause you to disobey God. The devil knows it. The devil knows that love can cause you to disobey God. There are very few of us here who will not stand against God for the person we love. Some of you you will stand against God. You will lie for your child, even though God said you shouldn't lie. This is why I am telling you that the marriage is under assault. Because the devil knows that the only way to turn you against God is to turn the marriage into a perverse and a corrupt thing. So now you have the husband intentionally, knowingly, deliberately, deliberately disobeying God. And this, this, this is what we call love. People are boldly saying, man, he loves me. All because he did a stupid thing that God said you should not do. And in the middle of it, the devil is breaking the homes. The devil is breaking the family. There are people that will kill to protect their family. There are people that will steal for their family. Even though God, the devil knows how to use the family to destroy God's purpose. To 
destroy God's purpose. So this same family has gotten to a point where it was meant to fulfill the very agenda of God, but the devil has turned it into a corrupt business. The father is lying. The mother is lying. The children are lying. Everybody is lying at home. When the children are growing, they see their father on the phone talking to someone and lying. They see their mother on the phone talking to the other side and lying. It is like at a certain point, we cannot choose God. We choose our marriage over God. That is the attack. The devil has managed to enter into the homes and he knows. He knows, he knows if we can fail in marriages and we can lie in our marriages, we can steal in our marriages, we can corrupt in our marriages, the same people, we will come and sit in church and sing. God is looking to create a holy church of which we are not. Because we, 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 we are coming from a place where we have corrupted everything. Our homes are broken. We are in church and the church is broken because we are broken. We are sad from home. We come to church. We are sad. We are broken at home. We come to church. We are broken. And there is nothing that can penetrate us. Why? Because the devil knows if I can mess them up at home, whatever they do at church is a lie. It's a lie. And God will not accept it because it is not true. The parents get upset that their children did not lie for them. Why didn't you tell her, I am not home? And then we have come to a point where these things are acceptable that Adam, Adam would deliberately, intentionally, knowingly disobey God, understanding. But we have come to understand this thing by Hollywood, by media, by TV, that this is love. This is not the reason for the marriage. This does not mean Adam love Eve. This, if, if Adam can disobey God for Eve, that is not love, that is evil. And if you get to a point and you think your wife or your husband standing for you when you are wrong, that is love. That is evil. If Adam can stand for wrong and disobey God, but we have come to a point where we have defined these things as marriage. So our marriages cannot stand. They, they, because, because, because they don't fulfill that for which God has established it. Read on please. Let me finish this. Oh my God. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew that they were naked. Mm -hmm. And they sewed fig, tree leaves, excuse me, fig leaves together mm -hmm. and made themselves coverings. Uh -huh. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden mm -hmm. in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you shouldn't eat? of then the man said the woman whom you gave me to, excuse me gave to be with me she gave me of the tree and I ate verse 13 mm -hmm. and the Lord God said to the woman what is this you have done the woman said the serpent deceived me and I ate uh -huh. 14 so the Lord God said to the serpent because you have done this let's you stop here let's stop here because I want to end this I'm going to throw things at you when I'm ended the first attack against marriage was in Eden. The family construct, the marriage, the institution that God has blessed, turned against God. Stop doing what God instituted them to do. So this, 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 we have Christians in marriages who want to do it their way. Why? Because they, they simply don't understand why God constructed it. They think it was for them, but they don't understand that God established it for a reason. For this reason, Jesus said there is no marriage in heaven. The purpose for marriage was ordained by God for the earth. So now it's like we, 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 we are at home and we are messing up. And, and, and in fact, we have pain against God. 
the second attack Genesis 3 you don't have to read verse 14 I will continue this another time Cain and Abel the next time the devil wanted to destroy the family and the marriage structure he attacked Cain and Abel the family the devil never attacks God's purpose he attacks the vehicle for God's purpose The third. The third time the devil attacked. You see, every time there is an attack, God bless the reset. I don't want to call it a reset. But he, he, he gives man grace. Takes them out of Eden and gives them grace. And then they came out of Eden. And yes, still Cain and Abel messed up. When Cain and Abel messed up, things went on. The Tower of Babel. And then God destroyed everything. Then Noah and his family came out. And the third time of the attack was Noah. The family entered when God started all over again with humanity. And it was Noah. It was as though the devil would not even wait for Noah to even die. The moment Noah rested... The Bible said he planted a vineyard. The Bible said he has Genesis chapter 9. The Bible said he had some of it. And all. then the Bible said he went into his room and he was naked. And his grandson, I mean, and his son Ham entered the room, saw his father's nakedness, make a mockery out of his father. And the Bible said he told his two other brothers. And the Bible says they would not look on their father's nakedness. They took a garment and they went backward and they covered their father's nakedness. Their father woke up and it was told to him that Ham made a mockery of his nakedness. And the Bible says the father cursed the whole generation of Ham by cursing Canaan. The whole family structure was messed up. The, 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 the devil used harm to mess up the destiny of that family. Simply that. And a lot of family are going through this where there is always, they will tell, there is always one corrupt apple in the family. There is always one harm in the family. That is why I don't eat harm. Amen. Was it four? The fourth time there was an attack. You remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? After the attack, the Bible says an angel of the Lord took Lot and his two daughters to Zoar into, into the mountains. And they were supposedly to be the only people left. And you know what happened? The Bible says after the angel of the, the Lord left them over there. Let's be on our feet. The Bible says, if you be on your feet, I will stop talking. The Bible says that the daughters of Noah, Lord, thank you. Yeah, you are smart. You are catching something. May your marriage prosper. Amen. The Bible says the daughters of Lord had a conversation together. The older one said, I will sleep with our father tonight so that we can have a child and tomorrow you shall sleep with our father. Genesis 19 verse 30. Open there. Sodom and Gomorrah was supposed to be another reset of the family structure. It was supposed to bring the family back to God's order. It was supposed to restore marriages. But immediately after the judgment, the devil entered again to temper with the house, to mess up the structure. Read on. Verse 30. Then Lot went up, up out of Zoar uh -huh. and dwelt in the mountains, uh -huh. and his two daughters were with him, uh -huh. for he was afraid to dwell in Zoar. Let me have the oil at the back there quickly. The oil. And he... And he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. Uh -huh. Now the firstborn said to the younger, mm -hmm. Our father is old, and mm -hmm. there is no man on the earth to come into us mm -hmm. as is the custom of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Verse 32. Come, let us make our father drink wine. Uh -huh. And when Thank you. 
and we will lie with Cabos. him that we may preserve the lineage of our father. Uh -huh. So they made their father drink wine mm -hmm. that night. Mm -hmm. And the firstborn went in and laid with her father. And he did not know when she laid down or when she arose. 34. It happened on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. 35. Mm -hmm. Then they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger one, the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. 36. Thus, both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. 37. The firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. Mm -hmm. And the younger, she also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ani. Ben -Ani. He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. The Ammonites. Now listen carefully. Genesis, uh, Matthew chapter number 10, verse 34. The devil entered into the house of Lot and perverse the family structure, perverse the order for marriage. Too many Christians are tempted to do too many things which are not of God. Simply because a lot of things has become the norm, the norm for us. Christians will ask, is it okay for us to watch porn to incite ourselves for sex? There's a lot of things that is going on and a lot of things that is allowed. Christians go into sex therapies and all kinds of things. At a certain point, we must come to the question of Jesus. Did you not read? Did you not read? The devil has entered into the homes. Entered into our churches. Entered into our families. He doesn't care whether you are a bishop, you are a prophet, you are a pastor. He doesn't care who you are, an archbishop. Everybody is getting divorced. Everyone is having marital issues. Everyone is fighting for their children. We have children in our churches who are gays and homosexuals, whatever, and, 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 and things of that nature, perverse. The devil has entered into the church. We have worship leaders who are lesbians and gays and whatnot. The devil has broken the family and the marriage structure of God. And in so doing, the devil has destroyed the holiness of the church. The one thing that made marriage a holy matrimony. One day a pastor's wife said to the pastor. That I want us to have a threesome. And if we don't have a threesome I am breaking out of this marriage. And she insisted. The devil has entered into the church and marriages are under attack trust me the way the church will fail is by means of marriage and the family that is the way the church will fall because the standard is broken in the marriages the standard is broken at home and hence it is broken in church if we cannot uphold the standard in our homes, we can't uphold it in church. Matthew chapter 10, verse 30 is what I said. Verse what? 34. Please read quickly. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. Jesus said, do not think I came to bring peace. I did not come to bring peace. I did not sword, come to bring peace. But a sword. But a sword. Read on. For I have come to set. To set a man against his father. To set a man against the father. So he is saying that at a certain point, if the father is not doing the right thing, the one that is of God must be set against the father. 
At no point do you choose your family over God. Read on. A daughter against her mother. A daughter against the mother. At no point should the daughter ever lie for the mother. And disobey God deliberately. For the mother. Read on. A daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Uh -huh. And a man's enemy will be those of his own house. A man's enemy will come from the house. This is, the, you could stop there. This is the point of the attack. The devil's attack is within the home. It's within the, lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say tonight. Tonight. By the blood. By the blood. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Say I refuse. 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 To be. To be. A candidate. A candidate. Of the devil. Of the devil. To disobey. To disobey. And to destroy. And to destroy. The plan of God. The plan of God. For my family. My family, for my marriage, for my marriage, in the name, in the name of Jesus, of Jesus, say my father, my father, say my maker, my maker, say my father, my father, say my maker, my maker, say tonight, tonight, I receive, I receive the power, the power, the power, the power to resist, to resist any attack, any attack against my marriage, against my marriage, against my family, against my family, in the name, in the name of Jesus, of Jesus, say tonight. Tonight, I resist. I resist. I resist. I resist. Any attack. Any attack of the enemy. Of the enemy against my family. Against my family. Against my spouse. Against my spouse. In the name. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Say my father. My father. Say my maker. My maker. Say I overrule. I overrule. I overrule. I overrule. Any designs. Any designs. Any designs. Any designs of the enemy. Of the enemy. Over my life. Over my life. Over my family. Over my, over my relationship, over my, relationship. Over, my, over my marriage, over my marriage. In, the name. in the name of Jesus, of Jesus, of Jesus. Of Jesus. say my father. my father, say my maker, my maker. Under, the under the covering of the superior blood, of, the superior blood. of Jesus, of Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ, say today, today. say today. today, I redeem, I redeem. My, family. my family, my marriage, my marriage. from the hands, from the hands. Of the, enemy. of the enemy, in the name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus, say tonight, tonight by, the by the blood of Jesus, of Jesus. I, fight I fight for my family, for my family. say by the blood, by the blood of, Jesus. of Jesus, I fight, I fight for, my for my marriage, say I fight, I fight for my marriage, for my marriage. say I fight, I fight for my marriage, for my marriage. say I fight, I fight for my family, for my family. in the name. In the name of Jesus, of Jesus. lift up prayer tonight. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. Sukarabakataya. Rapapapapapaya. Sukarabakataya. Atiyataya bakataya. Sukarabakataya. Rapapapapapaya. Saya. Rima sukarabaya. Rapapapaya. Rapapapaya. Jesus. Time is up. I'm sorry. Please touch the oil and we're going to pray. I want to use you as a point of contact for your family, for your future marriage, for your current marriage, whatever home that you are coming from. We are praying this very day for stepfathers, for stepmothers in the name of Jesus Christ. We are praying this very night in the name of Jesus for, for dysfunctional homes. We are praying for children, sons and daughters who have went wayward, cousins who have went wayward. We are praying against the spirit of sexual perversion. We are praying against the stance in the name of Jesus Christ. Rapa Kataya la Bras, Rapa Papa Papa Payatas, Rapa Papa Papa Yala Bras, Rapa Papa Papa Yala Bras, 
Jesus. Church, we, 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 we have to come to a point one of these days where we will just pray, but I, I need you to build a foundation on what we are praying on. Amen. I need you to build a foundation of that. The, the very fact that someone could be married to someone for 30, 40 years. Only to find out 30, 40 years later that the person I'm married to is gay. And you say, it can happen to you. But this has happened to people in the church. It has happened to people who are pastors. It has happened to spiritual people like yourself and I in church. It can happen to anyone. The fact of the matter is that the, the, the devil has sneaked into the church. The fact that someone treats you well, talks to you well, does not mean that they are your life union. Does not mean that they are the one that God has ordained for you. And sometimes, church, we have to carefully pray. We have to pray to be sensitive to the spirit. We have to pray that we are not so emotional about our marriage. We are not so emotional about our families that we become so embittered and we forget that it is the enemy raising people in our family against each other. We pray in this last prayer. The devil entered into Eden to attack the marriage. The devil entered into Noah's house to cause a sexual perversion in the family. The devil entered into the house of Lot and the devil caused another sexual perversion. And the devil destroyed the family structure and the marital home. It can happen to anyone. It can happen to anyone. Unless God opens your eyes, you don't know that person you are about to marry or that person you are married. Because you are just married to a stranger. We are praying this very night finally that my father open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. I don't want to open my eyes 40 years later and recognize I married someone that is perverse. Open your mouth now and pray and say, my father, open my eyes. 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 Set Church, we have to pray. There is no time for that. I apologize. Many of you have heard what is happening with Bishop T.D. Jakes and whatnot. Whether it is true or not, it is soon to be discovered. But one thing I know is that the church has to pray. And one thing he said is that even if I did it, I can pray to God and God can forgive me. See, this is the construct of the church. We think we can do anything. And this is how we have allowed the devil to infiltrate the family and the church. That we have lost integrity and we have lost everything. But if there's one thing I know, we need to pray for him. Because whatever happens to him, 
is going to be the biggest church scandal of a century. It's going to be crazy. And you don't want to be part of the church when it happens. So it needs to be prayed for. Amen. It needs to be prayed for. We, we are joking around too much. We, we are going around business as usual. When the enemy is attacking us and tearing things apart from within. And the church is just going around. Prophesying, having programs, conferences, business as usual. Lift up your hands, please. Let me take the oil back. I pray, may the Lord preserve your family. Amen. As the oil has touched the ground, so let Jehovah touch your family. In the name of Jesus. So let Jehovah preserve your marriage. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your marriage shall be preserved. In the name of Jesus. Your marriage shall be kept. In the name of Jesus. Your marriage will be a holy matrimony. In the name of Jesus. It shall be bonded and binded by God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I come against every assault and every provocation of the enemy over your marriage. I pray that the enemy will not turn your spouse against you. That the enemy will not turn your children against you. That the enemy will not turn you against your children. I pray that God will keep the family together. I pray that God will keep your life together. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are not married. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes. I pray for revelations. I pray for dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever you have set on your hearts to marry. May the Lord open your eyes. May there be a full disclosure in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. You shall not marry in vain. You shall never marry a lie. In the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not marry a lie. You shall not marry to be disappointed. You shall not marry to regret. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let me have um, the MC come up and then we'll run up with the offering.